Hello and welcome to Manika IS. So this is part three of lecture two, internal security. In the previous lecture, we read about the topic linkage between development and spread of extremism. Today, we'll discuss the evolution of Naxalism or extremism in India. So first of all, we'll discuss the ideological roots. आइडिया कहाँ से जर्मिनेट हुआ एक्सट्रीमिज्म का फ्रॉम वेयर दी आइडिया ऑफ एक्सट्रीमिज्म केम इन टू बींग आइडियोलॉजिकल रूट्स सो द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट दिस आइडिया वॉज गिवन बाय मार्क्स ही सेड दैट देर इज अ नीड टू कन्वर्ट कैपिटलिस्ट सोसाइटी इन टू कम्यूनल सोसाइटी एंड दिस कैन ओनली बी डन by the means of revolution why he propagated that capitalism needs to be converted into communalism because this means class or class based society and this means classless society that is community owned resource not individual owned resource where individuals are uh, some are superior some are inferior in terms of monetary benefits and the availability of resources so uh, he advocated the conversion of capitalist cat capitalist classes into communal classes okay so he advocated that this can only be bring through the means of revolution and who will be the agents of revolution who will bring on bring this revolution they will be workers okay who have been exploited and they will br they will be the one who will bring revolution against capitalism and they led to the establishment of communalist state now this idea of marx that the marxism theory was practically applied by lenin in russia and this revolution can be a violent revolution also essentially it meant violent revolution only so lenin practically applied this theory of marx in russia and he said that revolution can also occur in pre industrial society so to just bring a distinction marx suggested that revolution can come in industrialized society only from where you will convert capitalism into capitalism okay however it's he said that it can also come in pre industrial society and will result into industrialized society but where the resources are owned by the government okay so he said the now this uh, application of marx theory in russia inspired another person in china whose name was mao mao zedong this was his complete name now lenin inspired mao and he advocated violent revolution but here the tools were peasants and farmers and not the workers okay now he said these people will bring in revolution so it was in 1950 that mao tried to bring in revolution in china and he was successful as well okay and this mark the beginning of maoism maoism is basically a theory which it's an ideological concept which glorifies violence and teaches us that you can capture the state power through protracted people's war that means through armed insurgency through mass mobilization and through strategic alliance he very famously said that revolution can bring through barrel of gun revolution can come through barrel of a gun 
this was philosophy of mao now this philosophy of mao which was there in 1950s inspired some elements in india and these were extremist group and this was the ideological root of naxalism extremism in india so now let's discuss about the terminology whenever we read about extremism we came across three four words what is that uh, those are maoism maoist naxalites left wing extremist and left wing extremism whenever you add ism as we discussed now it is an ideology why why extremist group in india are known as maoist because they follow the philosophy of mao so they are called now this is ideological name and <coughs> and why they are called naxalites because the true origin of naxal movement in india was in 1967 in a place called naxal bari in darjeeling in west bengal so because of their geographical region it is known as naxalites left wing extremist is the official name for these group so always keep in the mind this terminology it is very important for you to have clear understanding of these terms so that you do not miss any point in your answers okay now let's discuss the origin how it originated in india so the main cause was failure of implementation of land reforms what happened uh, post independence government of india bring in land reforms which aimed at land sealing okay that means land above a particular uh, amount will be given to the people uh, the poor people or the uh, underprivileged people they will get the lands because if you know in zamindari act it which was there in bengal bihar and odisha what happened zamindars were made owners and the land of peasants were now handed over to the zamindars by britishers so zamindars holded a huge amount of land in those areas however the peasants were landless and they were the people who were uh, 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 who were underprivileged okay so they faced the atrocities so they had no livelihood at that time so government came up with land sealing acts however the those land reforms were not if efficiently uh, put in place okay so the the land the land owner sometimes didn't agree to give away their land sometimes they manipulated the land records in order to show that they don't have much land but because people were aware that they do have so there was a sort of aggression there was a sort of negativity towards them in front, in the, in the peasants in the poor people okay so this was the root of germination ki okay fine the, this was the reason that they were angry with the state okay with initially they were angry with zamindar and then eventually with the state so this was the reason of the germination okay however cpi communist party of india uh, they advocated land reforms and they said that they will uh, organize kisan sabha in these places and they will take the grievances of the kisan to the parliament it started in 1959 okay so it was pro kisan and th uh, th in the parliament they will advocate the reforms and they will push that the government should take these reforms in favor of kisans and the peasants okay so this was the main approach however and it uh, the negotiations were going fine also till 1962 however what happened in 1962 now this is entire story just listen to the story you will it will give you a lot of clarity in terms of its origin in 1962 indo china war happened now due to this war there was some ideological conflict in cpi so now due to that ideological conflict it break into two parts cpi m and cpi 
Now this was the majority who advocated that they should go by the means of democracy only and they should approach in the parliament itself. And for the time being, they should, you know, stand by the government and should let them fight the battle and then come back to this issue. However, now these were some of the elements who were not in sync with this mindset. Okay. And this was a minority. So, CPI stands, CPIM stands for CPI mass system. Okay, now in 1965, the CPIM organized Kisan Sabha in a place known as Siliguri. Siliguri under the leadership of Charu Majumdar. So Charu Majumdar, he was uh, just a brief about him. He was. Uh, in during 1962 war he was imprisoned and there he was not in good health also and at that point of time he read a lot about Mao and he was heavily influenced by the kind of revolution that Mao bring in China so and he uh, Siliguri was a place where he was living also it was his hometown as well so here he for the first time in any of the Kisan Sabha ever Charu Majumdar advocated violence he said if uh, they took away our land they snatched away our land so we will take away land through violence means itself okay this was something that he advocated but it, it didn't go well with the party of cim but charu majumdar keep on uh, expressing his violent views and for the first time in 1967 what happened? Uh, a peasant won a case ag against a zamidar in the court, and court said, "Okay, this land is yours." Happy peasant went to the land on land, and he start tilling his land. He thought now his it's his land, so nobody can take away that land. However, the landowners uh, who were famously known as Jyotidars, they didn't let him take away the land that was given as per the state word uh, as, as per the court verdict itself now this instigated a spark among the people who were already motivated by the speeches of charu majumdar okay so now this led to a violent clash and this happened in places place of naxal bari okay now this led to a violent clashes between the both the group Jyotidar and peasants. One or two peasants were uh, Jyotidar also killed peasant. Peasant uh, uh, they also retaliated. Further they burnt away a police choki as well. Okay, police station was also burnt. In that one policeman was harmed, and since this was a lo there were a lot of chaos, there were a lot of violence. Police also came into being, and on twenty fifth March, nineteen sixty seven. Sorry, twenty fifth May nineteen sixty seven, police opened fire. And what happened in during this time, during due to this open fire, there are there were about nine women who were who were killed, and one child was also killed. And after these violent incidences, the uh, the movement that revolt died down at that point of time. However, while the revolt was going on, while the sort of clashes were going on, China supported. And it called it a peal of spring thunder. Now this boosted the confidence of the people who were following the th uh, philosophy of Maoism. Okay, now following this incident in December 1967, what happened? Group, the followers of uh, Charu Majumdar and he himself, they left the CPIM. 
and in 1968 they form a group called AICCR All India Coordination Committee of Communist Revolution ठीक है it was formed in 1968 by the followers of charu majumdar now let's understand the development of uh, evolution of uh, extremism in india by the means of their phase phases development phase 1 this was the beginning this was the beginning of revolution and now phase 1 it was from 1967 to 1977 how it 1971 how it developed okay now let's understand what happened during this phase so aicicr was formed in 1968 now this group decided that they need mass base and for this they need to form a political party okay second they said that they will abstain from parliamentary elections remember earlier they were at uh, the people on cpim were advocated that they should be in parliament to forward their uh, cause but they decided that they'll abstain from the parliamentary politics okay and third they adopted guerrilla warfare theek hai now this was another thing and to meet this object objective of theirs they form a political party in 1969 by liquidating aiccr into cpi ml cpi marxist and leninist now during this time what happened uh, it was the movement was largely restricted to the areas of bengal bihar odisha this was the area where it was largely restricted to and its activities peak during 1970 to 1971 uh, okay this was the time where they peaked however knowing the menace how it is going you know government launched an operation operation steeple chase now in this operation they decided that they'll do the encounters and they'll try to stop them so what happens say for example how they planned the strategy is if this is an area which is affected by naxalism okay what they'll do they'll mark the the area as core area and this is the outer area this is the third layer now what was their role uh, approach during uh, in this area the inner area local police will be there and they will carry out encounters here CAPF will be there, and here they will put army officers. You know, army will be there at the exit points, and the aim was just to instill fear. However, uh, this uh, operation steeple chase was proved to be a failure because they could not arrest or encounter any of the. higher members of the naxal group and uh, like they couldn't arrest charu majumdar and the reason for the failure was the government declared their uh, uh, plan beforehand okay so that was one reason for its failure however in 1972 okay all the violent thing that happened he was removed from his party okay and uh, during that time government could get hold of him and he was arrested and he died in the prison okay now the death of charu majumdar created a void in the naxal movement for about 8 years and the next phase of naxal movement began in 1980 to 2004 phase 2 what happened in this phase was 
first of all understand the reason for void one was his death second we had two back to back emergency being declared by the indian state okay so emergency was there but in 2000 uh, in what happened in uh, 1975 MCC was born from CPI ML, ठीक है. So it's it saw a rise of or two organization, two important organization. One was MCC, another we'll discuss. MCC means Maoist Communist Center, Communist Center. This was born out of CPI ML, ठीक है. And it was largely there in Bengal and Bihar. this was operational areas okay second was people war group people's war group this was formed in 1980 in andhra pradesh now andhra pradesh was another addition to the geography spread of geographical area okay and it was found by kondapalli sitaram sitaramayya okay so that was the two main events of phase 2 okay so what was talking in this uh, time that they created these front organization to uh, spread their propaganda okay now second thing they decided that they will cause destruction to the public property destruction to public property now third and the most important thing here was they started uh, attacking civil servants as well see what was happening they had a list of enemies like whom they'll be targeting one was landlords okay so then there were uh, uh, people who were responsible for implementation of land reforms theek hai they were patwaris okay so they were attacking patwaris policemen so they were attacking these people but here they also added civil servants now they started attacking civil servants also they were abducted sometimes and after their abduction uh, abduction they will negotiate with the government okay that they want money or they want weapons okay this is how th this was their strategy to procure weapons also one of the strategy to procure weapon in 2004 these two organization mcc plus people's war group was merged to form cpi m but this is not marxist this is maoist cpi maoist this was the organization at present it is banned it is under uapa theek hai this is uh, and pwg was also banned in 1992 by andhra pradesh government okay now this marked the beginning of third phase phase 3 from 2004 till present in this phase also there are two division 2004 to 2010 violent activities at peak and post 2010 till present time it has been declining we will discuss the uh, status of as the uh, we will discuss the status of naxalism later but as of now we are reading the uh, evolution of naxalism in india okay so naxalism uh, in the third phase when cpi uh, cpi maoism uh, maoist was made their aim was to capture the state power through protracted long drawn armed struggle okay here a new class enemy was added now they starting attacking politicians as well okay theek hai now another thing that their their technique change into earlier they used to annihilate people but now they started ambushing also okay then they started using modern weapons as well say for example if you must have read newspaper in the recent part on 20 Third of April, what happened? There was an attack which which was being conducted. Twenty third or twenty two, I guess, uh, by by the the Naxalites in the region of Dantewada only in Chhattisgarh, and 
दे प्लांटेड एन आई डी एंड द पुलिस कॉन्वे वॉज इंटायर लाइक टेन पुलिस मैन व देयर हु वर किल्ड इन दैट एम इन दैट इंसिडेंट ओके सो दिस वॉज वन ऑफ द मेजर इंसिडेंट दैट अकर इन लास्ट टू ईयर वेन इट कम्स टू एक्सट्रीमिस्ट एक्टिविटीज सो दिस वॉज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट वॉयेंट इन लास्ट टू ईयर्स ओके सो now they started using ieds also and if you have read the government said they have very less technology to uh, 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 you know apprehend the presence of ied in deep down in the roads so uh, that's another problem that india is the uh, police uh, is facing in terms of curtailing them now their approach in this part, no, time changed and they started what they started is they started maintaining secrecy they decided that they will not reveal much about their plans and to the present day their leadership also a secret nobody knows who is uh, you know who is their leader okay second they uh, now what they do is they loot police weapons and as we discuss ambush okay so the government they rely on earlier they used to rely on resources or some leadership they they planning that they used to reveal now they rely on pattern and analysis okay now next we will discuss this was the third phase it is still going on next we'll discuss status of extremism in india and uh, how government has been successful what is the government strategy this will de deal in next class and and the third is what should be the steps that need to be taken so i forgot to mention one thing the area where the extremism is there the the area of their presence is known as red corridor okay this is red corridor so this was one thing that was missed out okay so we will discuss these three topic in the next lecture till then thank you please aap isko padhiye if you have any questions you can please ask and if it is not clear you can please ask me i can reiterate the same thing thank you so much have a nice day